It's just that massive adrenaline rush, just that unorganised chaos. He was addictive, I'm not going to lie. Three weeks after the arena bombing that killed 22 people and the far right descended on Manchester in what they called a march against hate. Among them, a 15-year-old schoolboy on his first demo, which he filmed on his phone. You get people that are there because they are patriotic, but they're few and far between. You get the people that are just plain racist and neo-Nazis. Because of his young age, we've agreed not to identify him, so we're calling him Mark. At a time when Britain is seeing a new wave of far-right extremism, he reveals how he was groomed online, how he rose up the ranks, and how he eventually managed to break free. I grew up in a very small town, um, very small population, majority white. There's nothing much to do for young people. A young boy with nothing much to do, all around him gleaming new developments, but they had left his community feeling forgotten. I was just angry at the world. I wasn't doing well in school. Um, I pretty much knew that I wasn't going to pass my, pass my exams. Um, obviously, growing up, school always taught, told you, you know, you don't, you don't pass your GCSEs, you're not going to be anything in life sort of thing, so the anger stemmed from there, really. So you felt like you weren't going to come to anything, you weren't going to amount to anything? Yeah. A sense of helplessness that left him vulnerable to the attention of local extremists. A school friend told him about a group that was offering free transport to rallies. They would often clash with the police and with counter-demonstrations. Amongst the crowds, though, he says, he found a sense of belonging, of brotherhood. He even got to meet one of his online heroes. So for a young lad to be in that, it must yeah. have been quite an adrenaline rush. It was. It was um, I was actually on the front line for most of it. Uh, I held the banner at one point. I met Tommy Robinson that day and I was watching a lot of his videos and I really looked up to him at the time. But yeah, I felt it was like just starstruck, I guess you could say. Intoxicated by the attention, Mark began spending hours online, joining around 60 far-right groups on Facebook. He describes how groups like Britain First drew him in. Britain First is a declaration of war against all of the politicians and the traitors that are destroying and betraying our inheritance. Britain First commonly make posts such as where they say, if you don't think British soldiers should live on the streets, share this post. I think you know, 99% of the population agrees that. They do kind of draw you in, they kind of drip feed you this propaganda, and they'll slowly, slowly build up this like, this kind of hatred towards Islam. England till I die. That hatred towards Islam was expressed in the new chants that he learned, which viewers may find offensive. Allah, Allah, who the f is Allah? Allah, Allah, who the f is Allah? Mark became a regular at far-right events and says he came to the attention of Paul Golding and Jada Franson. At the time, they were the leaders of Britain First and had gained headlines when Donald Trump retweeted her posts. Mark describes the pride he felt when he received a personal phone call from the couple. So the leaders of Britain First were ringing you, a young boy, on your phone? Yeah, it was unreal, like, how, like, how have I gone from you know, a, a cocky teenager, I guess you could describe me as on social media, to now speaking to the main leaders in sh such a small amount of time. They wanted me, me to be the poster boy, they wanted me to get my friends involved. Britain First deny Mark's claims, telling us they don't accept membership from anyone under the age of 18. Golding and Franson were later convicted and jailed for an unrelated incident of religiously aggravated hate crime. I think the far right has been underestimated by quite a lot of people. Yes. Nigel Bromage works for the government's Prevent programme as an intervention provider or mentor to young people like Mark who have been radicalised. The far right's changed absolutely drastically from what it used to be. No longer is the image sort of violent and sort of portraying actually, you know, these are just kinheads or football hooligans. Um, you know, from my own uh, point of view, we mentor people now as young as 14. Yeah. He showed me the tactics used by extremists online, including video games where points are given for killing immigrants, to invitations to private forums where the recent Christchurch attacks in New Zealand are praised.
Mr. Bromage is well aware of the tactics used by the far right, as for 20 years he was an active member of groups like Combat 18 and the National Front, the forerunners of the BMP. There are some people who say that uh, de-radicalisation doesn't work, that you can't change someone's mindset. What do you think? Um, I think I'm living proof that you can. You know, the people we engage, these people go from uh, populist right supporters who are just angry about ISIS or grooming, um, through to hardcore neo-Nazis who have been entrenched in their belief for decades. You know, I believe you can actually de-radicalise anybody. And it was with the help of a mentor that in the end helped Mark leave the far right. After being reported to prevent by a teacher, he says that for the first time he was given respect and spoken to like an equal. And I could relate to him, which a lot of other people at the time I couldn't. And the way he spoke to me, you know, he was respectful to me, which um, I, I don't think a lot of people were. And he, again, he didn't judge me. He, he understood why, you know, uh, a person from a council estate in the majority white area could get involved. And rather than, you know, telling me to leave, he planted the seed on why I should leave in my head. The number of far-right referrals to prevent has risen dramatically. Although the programme has been controversial, Mark says that for him, without it, he believes his anger would have led him down a dangerous path.